Hi guys, Squirrel here, and welcome back to Mud Runner Spin Tires. You may say, why are you saying welcome back when this is a game that you've never played before? Well, I have played this game before. This is, in fact, Spin Tires with a new name. And you may or may not know what Spin Tires is, but Mud Runner is the new name for it. Now, this game has a bit of a checkered history. Uh, the game was originally built by a very talented Russian developer, and he built a game called Spin Tires, which is you driving vehicles in the mud, very realistically simulated. And it was published by UV Games, and shortly after release a few years ago, the developer and the publisher fell out. That's all I'm going to say about that. They fell out. This game has been kind of wandering around in the doldrums for the last two or three years. Nothing much has happened. It has now been resurrected and is now published by Focus Interactive. Focus Interactive published a lot of games. They now publish Mud Runner, and the original Russian developer is on the development team. So, hopefully... This game now has a future. Now, if you bought the original Spin Size game, you can buy Mud Runner at 50% off. Having said that, you may be thinking to yourself, well, why do I get 50% off? Is it a new game? What's new in it? And we're going to talk through all of this stuff. If you've never bought this game before, you can, of course, buy it on Steam, but I'll drop a link in the video description where you can get it slightly cheaper on Games Planet. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the interface first, and then we'll have a look at one of the new maps. If we start off by looking at the settings panel, you can see the settings panel is very, very basic. It's slightly laid out different to the original spin tires, but there's nothing much to say about this. It is what it is. You can slide up the graphics and simulation quality and resolution as you see fit. In terms of controls, the controls are identical to what spin tires had, with the exception of one or two bits and pieces. Same with the gamepad if you use a game controller, or you can swap between keyboard and controller. Uh, it's up to you, personal preference. I kind of like to use both, <laughs> a bit of a hybrid kind of guy, and you can of course plug in a wheel, which I don't personally do. Uh, if we then go back to uh, the tutorial, actually no, I'll skip the tutorial, I've done the tutorial, it's quite useful if you've never played the game before. There's a multiplayer, similar to what the original multiplayer was. It also has this thing called challenges, which the original one didn't have. Uh, the original one had achievements, and that seems to have been removed. Although there are Steam achievements that I can see. There's 44 Steam achievements currently. Oh, and that's one other thing I should point out. This is a press review key. This is pre-release. This game comes out on October the 31st. It's a, pre it's a press review key. So what you're seeing here may not be what actually happens on release. It may change slightly. Uh, so the challenge is you've got things, you know, as you can see here, complete the, the rig first, complete a repair and refuel first, um, pick up a trailer, drive it, a rig through a small town, there's all kinds of fun challenges that you can do there. What I'm going to do is focus on the single player. Now, with the single player, uh, the original spin tires came with, I think, six maps. It had coast, flood, the hill, plains, the river, and volcano, if I remember. Looking at this, uh, as it stands right now, we have the bog, island, seashore, crossing, downhill, and deluge. Uh, but you can see that these are all locked. I have to get more progression points in order to unlock them. So I'm going to play the bog which is one of the new maps, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to play it on Hardcore. Uh, now, you may be wondering what Hardcore is, if you've never seen the game. Uh, I shall change this to... Let's see, if I switch it to Casual or Hardcore, Hardcore says, Damage truck uh, struggles to steer, its engine has less power and stalls. The diff lock doesn't affect steering wheels and damages the truck on hard surfaces. So if you engage the diff lock when you're on a hard surface, you will literally start to damage uh, the transmission system. Uh, the diff lock itself can't be engaged while using automatic gearbox, so you have to put it into manual gears in order to use the diff lock. Uh, and then you've got the more practical aspects like the log stations. Now, if you're wondering what this game is about, essentially it's about moving logs uh, from the log station to the um, from the kiosk to lo uh, the lumber mill. Sorry, it's the other way around, isn't it? No, from the log station to the lumber mill, that's what you do. Uh, so you basically move logs, and when you've moved enough logs, it completes the game. Uh, additionally, you have to unlock the map, so you can't see all the map, and you have to travel to various kind of points where it will unlock a, an area of the map. That will become clear when we start playing. Uh, navigation is limited to distance and position of next route, and wheels with auto steer and force a truck to move downhill. In other words, hardcore is a lot more realistic. If you've never played it, suggest you go casual and just have fun, but I'm going to play it on hardcore. 
Now, there's a game balance section here, and what you can do is you can pick some of the vehicles or some of the trucks that you start the game with. The original game was moddable. I assume uh, Mud Runner will be moddable as well, but I believe that the developers, the authors of the of the mods, have to convert their um, trucks, their vehicles, to the new Mud Runner. But I think the developer has provided some kind of tool that lets them automatically convert their old mods onto the new Mud Runner. I don't know enough about that, but essentially it should be moddable. We're going to play vanilla, and as you can see, what you can do is you can pick different vehicles, but a lot of them are actually locked at the moment, so I will need to progress in the game in order to unlock some more stuff to play with, which is kind of cool. Uh, one of these vehicles, which is a, kind of like a Land Rover, I forget what, what that is, it's a, a Mazda or something like that, I can't remember. Uh, they're all Russian, so I don't know the names of them all. Uh, this one is recallable, so this is, I think, the only one, even in hardcore, I think you can recall it back to the garage, whereas the other ones, if you, if they get beached or damaged and you can't move them, you have to go and recover them with one of your other vehicles. Uh, you can choose a different vehicle like that, uh, and depending on what you choose, for example, if I go with this, you can see it breaks the game balance because it has too many stars. If I choose a two-star vehicle, it balances the game back again. Uh, but I'll leave it on... Let's leave it on that one. We'll use that as our kind of scout vehicle. And uh, the final thing to note before we start is this is your start point, and it kind of shows you a preview of the map. Uh, I think it's called the bog because this middle bit is quite boggy in the middle. And it kind of tells you what you need to do. You need to go here and get to log station, get logs and take it to the lumber mill. You also need to go to this log station and take logs down to the lumber mill. That's enough chat. Let's go jump into the game and you can see what it's about. Here we are. Back in spin tires. Oh yes, it's like a comfortable pair of slippers just jumping back into this thing. Everything feels the same as the original game. It's uh, The lighting is the same, the mud is the same, the Russian vehicles are the same. There are some differences between this and the original spin tires. If you're wondering if it, is it worth your original, is it worth the money to get Mud Runner if you already have spin tires? Well, I would say to you the, the first thing is this game is going to be developed, the original one is pretty much not going to be developed. So if you like this game, you probably want to get Mud Runner. I would call it more of a DLC and a name change because you've got some extra content, but fundamentally it is the same game. If we have a look at the map, we're down here. Uh, this is the kind of uh, the fog of war, is what you generally call this. Uh, as you can tell, it's, it's all blacked out. I need to travel to these waypoints in order to unlock that aspect of the map. We're here. There's a lumber mill down there. If you remember on the, on the, uh, the start screen, there's a, lump, a log kiosk up here, and there's also a log kiosk here. And uh, we need to get the logs from there down to the lumber mill. The fuel station and garage is up here. Uh, the fuel station we can always access, and there's another fuel station down on the left here. Uh, but the garage, in order to unlock that so that we can use it to get repairs and things like this, we need to bring four garage points to it. In terms of the lumber mill, we need to deliver eight points worth of logs. Um, now, depending on the size of logs you deliver, you deliver different points. Obviously, the bigger logs need bigger vehicles. Bigger vehicles get stuck in the mud. That's the essence of the game. So one of the first things we're going to do is, con is configure up a vehicle, and I think we're going to travel over to here and have a look at these things. Uh, it looks like we've got a B66 down there. We've got a C375, and over here we've got a 430. Now, I don't have the list of vehicles in front of me um, in order to tell what they are. It's likely that... Um, Oh, that says it's a refueler with some liters in it. That's got 240 repair points. And okay, so it's likely these are repair refuelers. This one can carry medium logs. This is a log carrier. So that's good. Uh, up here, there's a K700. Now, if I remember, the K700 is a, a log grabber, which is extremely useful because we will need a log grabber here because I'm playing it on hardcore. When we actually get to the kiosk, we have to load the logs onto the back of the trailer manually. And this is the kind of vehicle that can do it. Now, what I don't know is uh, if that's repaired and or refueled. Uh, because if it's refueled, what I'll need to, if it needs fuel, what I'll need to do is grab some fuel either from here or here and, uh, and take some fuel over to it. If it needs repairing, I'll need to take a repair vehicle over to it. So I think what we'll do is we'll start off by configuring something. We'll assume that we've got some fuel to get us going and we shall start off with maybe something that can repair so utility attachments as it says here carries 600 repair points you can also bring a utility trailer which has 600 liter fuel capacity 
so we could carry fuel with us as well, which could be very useful. So let's go for uh, the utility attachment. That will give us the ability to repair the vehicles. And then on the back of that, we'll grab a trailer, which then has 600 litre capacity. Now that will be empty initially, so it'll be quite lightweight. But when we load it up, it's going to be a lot more weight hanging off the back. Uh, fireproof exhaust is required to install fuel semi-trailer and system. Fireproof exhaust. It sounds interesting. Why not? Why not have a fireproof exhaust? Now, one of the criticisms I always had about this game was was the kind of horrible camera. As you can see, I'm spinning around here, and you may be thinking, will you stop doing that? I'm starting to get sick. Well, unfortunately, that's the game. Uh, as you're driving along, you have this really strange camera that does its own thing. You can move forward and backwards and left and right. However, in Mudrunner, there's one feature that was... I can't tell you how much this was asked for in the original spin tires, but one of the things you can do is you can go first person, and I'll show you that in a second. But let's start her up. Oh, look at that Euro 6 engine there, just, you know, all the emissions being filtered out. <laughs> Hybrid engine for the win. Uh, right, so bottom left is our control panel. We've got the diff lock, the wheels, the parking brake, and the winch. We'll use the winch later. Uh, you can see we've got no damage on us, and we've got 200 out of 270 litres of fuel, which is great. If I press the V key to go into advanced mode, uh, you can see I have these additional options such as detach the trailer, change to a different vehicle, and stop the engine. If I click that, it will quite literally stop the engine. And if I click start, it will start the engine. If I want to access the things that are on board, I can click on any of these here. So I can click on the utility trailer and repair something nearby. We'll do that later. If I press the R key, I get access to the manual gears. So currently this is in auto, but if you remember, in auto I can't use the diff lock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into... See how this has got three stages on it? So this is consider this like gear one, two, and three, effectively like that. So I'll put it into three. And now you can see on the bottom left, the diff lock is no longer greyed out. The Q key is what you use to access the diff lock. And the E key is what you use to access all-wheel drive. Now, the thing is about this game is you've got to be careful about your fuel management and all-wheel drive will drain a lot of fuel so my advice to you is diff lock when you're in the mud if you get on tarmac turn your diff lock off and all-wheel drive only use it when you absolutely have to and if you do that you should be fine you'll see the fuel burn rate down the bottom left here f1 and let's decide where we're going so what we're going to do is we're going to click on here we're going to put a waypoint down there, 270 meters. We're going to head on down here, see if we can kind of unlock these things. Uh, if they need any repairing, we'll repair them. We'll make a decision about where we're going to go next. Possibly push around up here, come up to the fuel station and go that way. At some point later on, we're going to have to go this way and try and get to that garage uh, and unlock this stuff. But the other way of doing it is to come at it from this direction. If we take a refuel here, we may be able to get through and down to that fuel station and continue around to the log mill. So that's another way of doing it. Hold down the accelerate key, release the parking brake, and off we go. So now you can see spin tires in its true form. It really is about mud physics. There is nothing else on the market quite like this game. And I am so happy to see this game is got a new fresh sort of uh, a breath of life into it because it was it was such a shame to see it sat there um, without being developed. This game has enormous potential and I, I think with focus behind it it really has a future. But don't consider Mud Mudrunner to be a new game. It is, like I say, spin tires with a DLC and a name change and it's all down to its very checkered history with the developer and the publisher. Now we're coming up to our first body of water. Uh, there's not much of a water here. Let me just put the parking brake on a sec. There's not much water here to worry about, um, but when we get to bigger pieces of water, we have to think about how we're going to go through this. The main danger that comes from water is, uh, firstly, if it's too deep, it will, will get too high, and ultimately it will kill the engine. And the second thing is, you never really know what's down here. It might suddenly have a deep drop or some rocks, and it's too easy to get yourself beached in water. With this, it's not really a big deal, but you know, later on we may have a problem. Uh, you can see roughly where we are on here. Later on, we're going to have to go across this river, probably, and that's where it's going to get fun, because that's probably a fast-flowing river. Uh, and I think this is... I think this bit's 
mountainous around here somewhere. This here, I think that's mountainous, from what I remember. Uh, now, let me show you something. I said to you before it has first person. What you need to do is you need to click like that, click to activate cap corporate camera. So that then takes you into first person view. And there's a couple of things to notice about this. Uh, that's your, your lock around limit. No, it doesn't have track IR. Yes, the textures are really low. And if you look at the dash, it's basically been superimposed with, uh, uh, you know, the dash from, from your main screen. It's been dropped in there. It is a bit hacky. Um, this was never built for the game originally, and there's no mirrors, by the way, as you can see. It was never really built for the original game, but it was asked for so many times. Um, so it is a little bit hacked in, but, you know, like I say, maybe we'll get it a bit better in the future. He does cross his arms over a lot as well, which does annoy me somewhat. But, as you can see, it is kind of fun doing it first person however without the ability to look in the mirrors and things like that it's definitely limited at the moment press the one key to jump back press the one again to go trailer two key will take you to the rear trailer back to one and that's how you move the cameras around pretty straightforward stuff oh space is parking brake by the way uh, also let me just pop it here it has headlight support. Now top left it says the direction, you can see we're going towards the waypoint in red, the distance to the waypoint 143 meters, the current time quarter past one and if we put the lights on with H we have these wonderful, you can't see them very much at the moment but they're kind of yellowy ancient, like the furthest from LED lamps that you can get but my favourite is the horn. Watch what happens on the screen when you press the horn <laughs> The birds fly off, I mean seriously this is the best horn, like the guy didn't need to add that visual effect, but there's just something so cool about it. And the fact that birds fly off, I mean crikey, we don't even have that in Eurotruck. Right now logs, logs and rocks are pretty much a pain, I've got to be honest with you. Uh, they can be a real pain, logs and rocks. They can do all kinds of funny things to the wheels and get you stuck. Uh, we're currently not on all-wheel drive. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to put ours down into second gear, if you like. And um, as we start to move through here, if we see the tyre spin, it means that we need to drop down another gear, or we need to engage the all-wheel drive. But we'll see what happens without all-wheel drive first. See if we can get over these logs. There you go. If the drive wheel starts to spin, engage the all-wheel drive. And you should be able to then get over the log. But look at the burn rate on the fuel when the all-wheel drive is on. 11, 12 litres a minute. And when I turn the all-wheel drive off, it's going to drop down to like 3 or even 4 litres a minute. Now that kind of burn rate can easily get you stuck on a map if you're not careful, which is why you really do need to remember to turn off the all-wheel drive when you don't need it. But what I like to do is just keep an eye out on my back wheels and if I see them starting to spin too much as I go through deep mud, I'll drop the gear down and if it looks like we're coping okay then I'll probably just drop the, you know, knock the gear back up and we'll get a bit more speed and a bit more fuel efficiency as well. On the harder ground it makes sense to stay in top gear basically. Right, now we're coming up on our waypoint which is what I wanted I think to turn right and then left and that should take us over to our uh, vehicles. You'll also notice later as we go through water, it washes the tyres. It's so cool. Uh, yeah, we need all-wheel at this point. When it gets really thick, that's when you need the all-wheel drive. Drop it down the gear as well. If you try and go too high a gear, all that really happens is the wheel spin. And you don't actually get much forward movement. And then you're just wasting fuel and going nowhere at all. I must admit, it is nice to be back in this game. I really hope they flesh out the gameplay and increase the size of the maps and make multiplayer um, a lot more cool. Multiplayer is great, but it does have some issues in this preview release that I've noticed. 
Uh, the game does have a tendency to crash on the main menu now and again. Um, every other every other sort of run it will crash, but that's again it's preview, you know, it's press review. So we just unlock that vehicle on the left. So what we can do is just pull up alongside it here. Uh, we'll kill the engine because we don't want to um, waste fuel unnecessarily. Now what we can do is we can press the V for get advanced up. We can access our utility attachment. Sorry, I used the trailer. Let's use the trailer first. And then we can see this one has got uh, 285 damage points on it. So we can use our utility trailer to bring it up to um, full state of repair. And then if we click on train, change truck and jump in it, uh, we can see how much fuel it's got. Now, it only has 69 litres of fuel, which is not a lot. I don't even know if we can make it to the fuel station, which is a bit of a problem. Because this thing would have to go all the way around here and work its way up to the fuel station just to get fuel. Uh, and the irony here is it is a fuel truck, <laughs> but it doesn't have enough fuel to get to the fuel depot, I don't think. Uh, so that's that's a problem for us. And it does randomize this stuff, that's the thing. So, you know, until I got here, I didn't know kind of what the situation was going to be. So every time you play it, even if it's the same map, you know, there are random elements to it that make it so that you can play it again next time and it's, uh, and it's different every time. So same thing again, we shall stop the engine, we shall go for our utility trailer. <sighs> right, this circle here is our repair radius. I need to be a little bit closer uh, just to be able to repair it. I thought it was close enough, but I wasn't. So we'll just stop the engine again. Utility trailer. Come on camera, move over. There we go. 148 repair points. So our trailer now has 161 repair points left in it, at which point we could more or less ditch that for a while. Um, now, we need to make a decision about what we're doing next. Bearing in mind it's quarter past four in game, which means it's starting to get darker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse. So we press the R key and stick it into reverse. Now, this game at night um, is fine unless you're going into areas of the map that you've never been into before at which point it can get pretty interesting at night okay this has been a pain uh, so if possible okay we're going to need all-wheel drive to get out of here I think so if possible I suggest that you travel at night down areas that you've been bef been down and save your exploring for the daytime and you can see just how much of a pain this mud can be there we go and these things don't like being reversed okay stop engine now, I think what I might do is I might change truck to that one, uh, but it's out of range from here, but that's okay. If you just go up to the map, you click on it that way and jump into it in here. So what have we got? 75 litres of fuel. We have a spare wheel, so it has repair points on it, a garage utility tent, which I think means it has garage points, and it also has fuel garage utility tent, so maybe we can use this to refuel the other truck over there, so let's see if that, that works. Now if you look at this one, it says diff lock always, so you can't turn diff lock off on this thing. Anything to worry about is the all-wheel drive. Okay, let's press B, utility tent. There you go, fill up 127 litres. Okay. Stop the engine change truck jump in this one and it's now got a lot more fuel so this now we could drive this um we could drive this up to this thing which needs repair points this carries logs and we're going to need to be able to carry logs so the fuel truck we could take to the fuel station bring it back and refuel that if it needs it or just take it all the way to the fuel station and move it further on and it can act as a mobile repair point uh, mobile fueling point which is really cool 
The K700 may need fuel, so we need to bring it up there anyway. Now, the other thing I've noticed about this game, which wasn't, I don't think, in the first one, uh, is this thing. I don't believe this was in the first game in Spin Ties. And what it does is it shows you how deep the water is. So you can see at this point, the water, those bars, the deeper the bars, the deeper the water. If you tried to cross here, you'd have a whale of a time. It doesn't show you flow, but it does show you depth. And that is incredibly useful. The other thing I'm noticing is it doesn't show me what the depth of the water is here. So I'm wondering if it's because of the proximity to it. And as I travel down here, maybe it will show it over here. So I think we should try that out. Right, this vehicle is the same as the other one. Diff lock is always turned on. Oh no, it's not. Not on this one. Hang on a sec. Not on this one. Uh, if we go to... Let's go with that. Yeah, diff lock is on now. Five litres a minute, that's not bad. Okay, so I'm going to drive... Let's see where we are in a sec. I'm going to drive down the road here, where I'm going to follow it around, and ultimately we're going to go to here and see what the score is. And we'll also see if the river depth thing changes at all. Okay, the kind of two stage on the first gear seems to be working okay for it. Have a look at it from the front. I think from this angle it looks really, really cool. You can really see the whole thing working out. You can see the physics and how the mud clings to the tyres. The logs get pushed out of the way. It's just... Oh, it's tremendous. Anybody that sees this game that's never seen it before just goes, wow, that is pretty amazing. Now, this on the left here, I've actually had uh, vehicles spawn in that as well, so that's another random spawn point for stuff. Okay, we may have to go into all-wheel, but we're coping at the moment. What I'll do is I'll keep right... A large part of this game is navigation. If you pick the wrong path through a certain section of the land, um, you can find yourself completely stuck. Now, the game does have a winching system. Ah, that's another thing which I've not showed you yet. One second, I'll tell you what. I might have to show you here anyway. If I just quickly put the brake on. Um, the winching system is... If I can remember how to do it. Oh, hang on. Not that. It's got this thing called uh, called Quick Winch, and if you press the... Where is it now? Press the F key, I think it is? No. Wait a sec. The Y key, that's it. So if you press the Y key and look around like that, before, you had to press the F key, then spin around, click on something, it would winch it up. Now, if you hold down one key and look around, it will auto uh, look where it's going to attach a winch to. Let's say that one. And then if you press it again, it then winches. It, it attaches the winch to it. And if you press the F key, it then starts to uh, haul you up. And then whenever you're ready, you just click on it. And you can do that to attach to other vehicles or to trees and things like this. But that kind of quick winch is uh, one of the features of the new game, and it definitely makes it easier. But today we don't need it, but that's because I'm not really... Now you see how the diff lock, it's like going, oh, you're damaging the engine, you know, blah, 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 turn it off. It's because the ground has become not so muddy, so it's just crying a little bit about it. As soon as you get back in the mud, it's quite happy. Now then, let's just hold up there a second and have a look at the map. Yeah. Yeah, so I was right. There is basically a radius around your vehicle that tells you how deep the water is. So we can't see that anymore, but we can see this. And we can instantly see that in terms of depth, we could get across here, okay? It's pretty shallow through there. Um, we should be able to get through here, but if you notice on the right, it's quite deep. It's a little bit shallower left. So if we keep left and then go middle, possibly, if we can do that. 
um, then we should, in theory, be able to make it through. It's quite fast moving though, so we'll engage all wheel drive as well. So we're going to need it just to get over the mud here. And we'll see if we can get across uh, without it being damaging on the engine. Let's go swimming! Nicely done. And we're over the other side. Now I should have done is... Probably just knock the gear back slightly. With the controller, the gear selection is a little bit fiddly. It's kind of easy with keyboard for that. Also, we'll put the lights on now, and you can see, like, the big difference the lights make at night compared to daytime. But it's also kind of yellowy, and can be quite washed out. Uh, so, I, I tend not to put them on until I absolutely need them, if that makes sense. But at night, it does get very, very dark. Okay, let's go and recover this, or unlock this thing anyway, and see what kind of fuel level it's on. Let's flick on the all-wheel drive while we get up this hill. Let's get a bit closer. Turn off the all-wheel and hit the brake. Stop the engine. Okay, fuel system. Fill up 99 litres. Absolutely. Okay, let's change truck. Have a look at this thing. Uh, it has 291 damage on it out of 600 so now this other vehicle came with a spare wheel and a spare wheel is like a mini repair station so we can take 86 off that bring it down to 205 so it brings it up to a state where it's you know it's it's drivable um it's not in brilliant condition but it's still drivable uh now we're here and what we need to do now is we'll probably take both the logger and the fuel truck we'll bring it up to the fuel station here get both refueled, and then we'll need to figure out a way through here. Um, just looking at that, it looks quite interesting through this terrain here. Possibly through there. We need to figure a way through here, either through that water or possibly down that road might be easier. That road looks a lot easier than that, doesn't it? <laughs> but that looks a lot more fun. So, uh, But ultimately, we're heading for the kiosk where we're trying to get this thing sorted. I don't know what repair state that's in. If it's broken, then we're going to have to bring one of these bad boys back and uh, and repair it. But I think we'll leave it there. I think that's uh, long enough for the first video. Uh, this has been Spin Tires Mud Runner. Remember, if you bought the original game, Spin Tires, you get a 50% discount on Steam on Mud Runner. And if you didn't buy it and fancy buying it, check out my video description because it has a link which will save you a bit of money on, uh, on the Steam purchase. But that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you think about Mudrunner and uh, if you want to see some more videos. Take care, guys. Happy, happy trucking. <laughs>